What's up guys, now that Zamorak has been out for a little while and I have done quite a few kills here, I have picked up a few things along the way that do help out when you're doing runs of the dungeon or whether you're just doing Zamorak itself. And even though we did one of these videos on the release day, I thought, you know what, there's more accurate stuff in this one now. Let's do another tips video to give you guys some extra things that I've picked up to see if it'll help you in your kills or your dungeon runs along the way. If it does, then do leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you have any tips that you want to drop in here as well, then drop them in the comments below. This is your time to backseat game and chuck all that stuff in there because if there is plenty then i may take them for another video but also it'll help the people scrolling through the comments and finding stuff as well other than that if you enjoy the music in the video there will be a link in the description to my music channel go and subscribe there all that music is free to use for any other aspiring content creators as well and uh let's go So while there's no particular order, they are going to be in order of like where you run the dungeon to whether it's just Zamorak. So the Zamorak takes me towards the end and then any dungeon tips early on. The first one we're going to talk about is going to be the ridiculous Jailer that most of you guys seem to mention about quite a lot. So the Jailer is something that you have to do. You go through the little barrier, you kill the Jailer, you drop his health down, then you chase him around that certain jail area. And then eventually he opens the last barrier when you can finally kill him off. And then you can go through and proceed through the dungeon. Now, this can be a little bit of a pain because one, he goes through lots of different mobs and it's a just freaking difficult fight to do. And two, if you're doing damage to him, he teleports. It's just it's just a drag, right? So you can actually skip the duration of this if you are going through your dungeons just to get the 25 runs and then you can skip the whole dungeon anyway you can do this a lot easier if you use a death touch dart on the jailer it won't just phase him and make him teleport away it will completely kill him and it will open the last barrier that you need to to be able to just go directly through and just skip this entire segment this is a pretty big tip if you are just wanting to rush through get 25 kills done ideally it's probably not worth the five mil that a death touch dart has value of but if you are someone who just wants to get it done you're feeling pretty lazy personally if i had any added on this because it just saves time and time is money to me um and this is just a little bit of an irritating part of the dungeon so you can death touch dart the jailer and you can save yourself some time if you think that it is worth it for your death touch darts to use them here Throughout the dungeon, you're going to run into some pretty tanky, strong demons, depending on your enrage. However, these demons can be defeated a little bit easier in a, a few ways. The way the damage works on these demons is it is not based on your actual damage on the weapons and gear that you've got. It's based on your accuracy. So if your accuracy is higher, then you do more damage to these demons. If you have low accuracy, then you're going to struggle because you are going to be dealing way less damage to them. However, you can never miss on these. You can always hit them. There is never going to be a mischance. It is all based on just how much accuracy you have and how much damage you deal. That being said, if you use things like a Guthic Staff or a Statius Warhammer, you can lower the defense of these targets, meaning your accuracy does increase, meaning your damage increases. Because you can never miss on these, you don't need to use Ingenuity of the Humans. You can hit them anyway if you use a hammer or anything like that off style. It's absolutely fine. If you're on melee, use the ability Quake. That is going to lower the defense as well. And on range, I guess you're just going to have to, you're just, you're just going to, have to take a hammer. There's not really anything you can do on range. <laughs> Fortunately, you don't have anything to lower defense with that. That being said, you can also use Dominion Mines. Dominion Mines work on these as they are level 134, I believe. There is a couple in the dungeon that you can't use it on, but I most of them you can, and it is definitely worth doing so. 20k damage guaranteed, just like that, like straight away, is absolutely worth it. It saves you some time, and I use Dominion Mines on these throughout the whole dungeon anytime that I'm running it. For this demon boss, after doing the church boss, the, the, the mini boss in here, you can actually tag this one straight away. And then as soon as you've tagged him and aggroed him, just go back to killing these three mages here that you can see me killing. The closest three mages to the portal. The reason you want to tag this boss is, yes, he's going to hit you and you will take a bit more damage. But what this boss does is he will eat or, or consume or devour or whatever you want to call it of the other three mages that you don't quite get to. He takes them as health, and even though you don't have to deal damage to him, he will still do this. It must be on a timer or just a random cooldown thing, but he does do this. And by the time you killed the first three mages, there's a good chance that he has probably finished killing off the other three for you, saving you quite a lot of time. So, tagging this boss is absolutely worth it. Not to mention, once the barrier opens up, you, he will follow you all the way to the top, and then he will also devour the other two mages at the top as well. Unfortunately, he doesn't eat the other demon. That would be hilarious, but he doesn't. He will take those two mages, though. And hey, it's a time-saving thing. It is definitely worth doing. 
And this is where we move into the Zamorak boss fight. There's only a few tips that I've got for this today, as a lot of the other stuff I'm still learning, I'm still improving, and there are things that I mentioned in the last one. We're not going to talk about the edicts and stuff, because these are all changing, and I'm still pushing my rage up and stuff, so we're not going to go quite, quite to that yet. I want to give you just stuff that I know is accurate and works fine. Now, that being said, in a group in this boss, you do not all need to be on the edict to charge it up. You can just have one person on it, and the adrenaline rush that you do get everybody in the actual team will get that no matter what so if you are stood outside of the edict and attacking zamorak just from the in the arena somewhere you are still going to get that 100 percent adrenaline rush i used to think that you had to be on the actual edict to get the adrenaline rush you don't being off of it you still get that adrenaline and so it's quite convenient to know that you don't have to then rush over and get on the pad or you don't have to wait around for someone to come out of the realm or from killing the demon before you go on and then start charging up the pad so it'll give you a quicker kill time and also it's just convenient to know about this also means that when you get the prayer drop mage bomb thing where he nukes you all the magic hits uh, and you have to stay in the circle you don't have to panic and move away because obviously only one person is going to get those nukes and you can stay split up and only one person will have to deal with it the next one is going to be that every time you go into the realm or into whatever it's called actually to kill the mage when you've done the eight, each phase this mage is going to stun you first every single time if you don't use anticipate or freedom when before you head towards him he will always stun you it will always stun you I believe he either uses deep impact or impact. I don't know exactly which one it is, but he will stun you. So it's convenient for you to use freedom or anticipate either before you go into the realm or as you go into it. Either way, it doesn't really matter as long as it's up when you either surge forward or walk towards the mage. He will not be able to stun you that time and then you can just deal the damage get through a lot quicker again it's just a time saving thing uh, it's just a convenience thing and it's just something that is definitely worth keeping in mind sometimes you get the demons and the actual mage together in here because you'll phase as he pushes you into the realm if you do enough damage again anticipate before you surge forward to kill your demons otherwise that mage is going to stun you and then higher in rage that demon is going to get through that portal if you aren't dealing with this properly this next tip is a little bit intricate, takes a little bit of learning, and it takes a bit of time practicing it, but I do hear it is incredibly useful at higher enrages as the bomb mechanic, where he will send you into the realm with the rune, and then he charges up his his uh, little, little bomb that he sends to you that kills you pretty pretty much, like, it's just a lot of damage. What you can actually do is stun him just the last tick before you get sent into the realm or the infernus, and then you can trigger that, making it do pretty much no damage as you trigger it literally on the same tick that it starts. So, this is quite difficult to do and i'm going to show you obviously on screen me doing it now this is only on a low in rage in normal mode in fact uh, so it's obviously going to be a little bit more scaled down damage wise and you will see that i'm just sort of stood here chilling waiting for him to use the mechanic obviously rather than dealing damage however what you want to do is as he sends them the mechanic of where he's like charging up the rune you can see that he's doing this one to send you into the realm you want to use anticipate if you can beforehand but if not just freedom is fine you still have enough time to freedom this and then just wait just as you're about to get sent into the realm, you'll see me do it here on the very last tick, you want to use a stun, whether it's impact, deep impact, or use asphyxiate, or whatever you want, you want to use one of these abilities. As you go into the realm, that stun will fire off, and it will say your character, as you can see for me, it says in it, yeah, has stunned, um, or one time, or whatever, and then that will fire off the bomb straight away. Because you've done it so soon, it fires it off, it does very little damage, you can kind of just ignore it. I still use res here, as you can see, and it makes it so that when you come out, out of the realm, you can just go straight back to doing damage, and you don't have to worry about dealing with a big hit. You don't have to use Vitality Potion, you don't have to use Reflect or Resonance or anything um, later on and take a massive hit. It can save you food, and obviously at higher in rages, this is going to hit a lot harder than in normal mode. So, it is definitely worth knowing about this. Um, the reason I know this works, uh, that I know this is a good thing in higher in rage, is one of my friends, no one, said that this is what, that, what they do with higher in rages to make sure that they can deal with this a lot easier. So, I thought this was something worth sharing it will take practice it is something that is all about timing and you do need to remember to get that anticipate and the freedom off beforehand but getting rid of this bomb nice and early is definitely worth your time and effort and i will definitely be applying this to pretty much all of my solos in the future keep in mind this is kind of only for solo as in a duo or trio or a four or a five man you will all need to do one stun each and you will all need to time perfectly you can probably do it in a duo or a trio but you would have to have everybody obviously time this at the exact right time but yeah Pretty useful tip, in my opinion, making that damage go pretty much down to zero. Definitely a great thing to be able to do. The next thing isn't overly a tip, but it is something quite useful to know. It's just information that it's pretty, it's pretty nice to know about. When you get a drop here, you will notice that there is an icon around your character that looks like daggers, little red daggers, glowy things, and this will show you that you do actually have a drop. So you do know there is a drop indicator before you actually take your loot to whether you are going to get a drop from this boss or not. 
So this is quite cool to look out for. And if you go on, you can get excited and hopefully you get yourself a bow piece rather than anything else. Obviously anything is great. Don't get me wrong, it is. But a bow piece, damn, that'd be nice. Anyway, good luck at the Zamorak, guys. If you have any other tips and stuff, drop them down in the comments down below. Of course, it is going to be really useful for other people. And if there is any more, one, it'll be good for me while I'm pushing my rage. And two, of course, we will be able to go out there and make another video and maybe use your comments in that. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. If you did enjoy, then do leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. Thank you so much to the channel members who support the channel that bit extra each and every day. Your names will have been on screen at some point or right now even. Uh, and I really, really do appreciate you guys. You help out more than you probably realize. So if anyone else wants to join the channel members, support the channel while you get some perks. Click the join button that's next to the subscribe button. And other than that, I will catch you all in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye.